Hello fellow investor, in this new video I'm going to review Porcedo. If you don't know it, Porcedo is one of the most used portfolio and dividend tracker out there. No matter how you invest or which style of investment you are following, tracking your performance is very important. And not only to see if you perform better than the market, which let's be clear, you don't. But it's a great way to document your investment journey and to stay committed to your investment goal. Because the hardest part of investment is to be committed on the long run. So this will be quite a long video because I analyze all aspects and functionality of Porcedo. But if you are in a rush, of course, timestamp in the description, you can jump where you want it. And let's begin. This one is the Porcedo dashboard. I already upload my dividend portfolio, even if I didn't upload all the transactions I did, I will explain a bit later, but there are more than $500,000 imported, so it's quite well populated. Porcedo is highly customizable from this point of view. We can decide to see this chart, this performance chart in different way. We can take a look at the return, you can take a look at the value of your portfolio. You see in gray we have the cash I deposit and the difference is uh, my gain in some way. Uh, we can decide to have the return on money-weighted return or time-weighted return or even the simple return. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check this slide right here that explains the different type of calculation of the return. This is honestly a bit of a technicality. I keep my portfolio always in money-weighted return. I think it's the one that better fit the way I invest. Anyway, we can see what is very interesting. We can see right here the value of my portfolio and uh, this uh, hypothesis. What if I invested in the S&P 500 or what if I will not invest? So if I not invest, I will have 427 and something thousand dollars because this is just the amount of cash I deposit. If I invest in the S&P 500, I will probably, I will probably, I mean, for sure, I will have a better performance because uh, it, there is around a $30,000 difference. Why I invested in dividend, that's another story, but as I said, this is not my complete portfolio. So, uh, But it's very common that uh, almost all investor, 90% of investor, underperform comparing to the S&P 500. We can see the chart at one month, three months, six months, uh, or full year or full period, depending how you want it. If we go a little bit down, these are some of the benchmark. And here, the result that we can, of course, edit. And this is the result of each of my different holding. This is for one day, one week, one month. For example, if we do from all time, we can see the gain in percentage. I think it's more interesting. We see that uh, Broadcom is the one is returning 225% uh, at the moment, while the worst stock I have, which is Paramount, uh, it has a minus 57%. If we go a little bit down, this is just all the holding with information about the average cost, the last price, the gain, and so on, number of share, market value, and we can order how we want. For example, if we do buy unrealized gain, as I said, we see that Broadcom is my uh, best performing stock at the moment. We can decide to view from cost basis, so to understand the cost allocation, from the gain, so unrealized gain, realized gain, the dividend, the fees, and whatever, or just by price. So to see, to see uh, the price of the stock comparing to the 52 week average and uh, what is the distance from the top from all time high. If we click on uh, one of the stock, for example, let's do it with uh, General Mills, it opens a, a tab related uh, to the stock. Let's go back. You see, uh, these are all the transactions I did when I booked General Mills, so we can see the uh, performance at the moment. So you see in gray, there is the average cost and in black, uh, there is the actual price. So we see that uh, I am having a gain with General Mills. And these are the performance of all the different transactions I did. In this case are for transaction. You can see uh, done all in 2021, but different months. And this is the return I'm having on General Mills. Before to move on, because there are really many aspects we can watch about Porcedo, and as usual, there is everything in timestamp, so you can jump where you want. I would like to address first, uh, not a problem, but uh, the most important issue of all portfolio tracker, which is the input of your data, the data of your portfolio. This is something that is always not easy to do it, uh, quite tricky, and uh, uh, it gets you frustrated, especially if you have uh, a lot of transactions like me. Let's move uh, to the transaction tab. Uh, 
Here, as I said, I loaded uh, more than 236 transactions and this is even not my full portfolio because my full portfolio is something more than 400 transactions. You can understand that when you have so many transactions, uh, it can be a little bit tricky. But of course, Porcedo and other portfolio tracker have some uh, way to make it easier. You can, of course, do manually, which is uh, nuts. <laughs> In my case, you can, you see, add the transaction here, one by one, by date of transaction, it was buy, sell, deposit, withdraw, whatever, insert the ticket, number of share, and so on. It will take years to do that. So the only way for me to upload my transaction successfully, if you have such a huge number, is to upload the file. Porcedo have different options. The first, and probably for many, most easy option is to use the Porcedo Excel template. So Porcedo let us download a template of, uh, um, let me do it, it's right here. This is an Excel template of how they want the file. So you can populate this manually. It will be much faster than create transaction by transaction as I showed before, you need just to follow this file structure, which at the end report the most important thing, the date, ticker, the action, if it was buy, sell, the deposit, the amount of share, the price, the commission. And of course, you need to follow this guideline. But uh, also this, uh, even if it's a little bit easier from importing the single transaction, is still quite uh, time consuming. And the only way to do it otherwise is to import directly from your stock broker. Unfortunately, at this stage, Porcedo doesn't have a broker connection, so you cannot connect Porcedo to your stock broker. It means even if you do all this import today, tomorrow you have a transaction, you need any way to upload it. It depends your style of investment. If you do one, two transactions per month, there is no problem. You can do it by yourself every time. You just need to remember to do it. But if you are somebody who do continuously transaction over transaction, you need to set up an import system. So every month, for example, you download all the transactions of the month from your stock broker and you upload in Porcedo. Speaking of which, it's important that your broker is one of the supported broker right here. For example, I use Interactive Broker. And this gives me the full step I need to follow in order to export correctly the file from Interactive Broker and upload in Porcedo. Is it easy? Not at all. Uh, even if you follow transaction, you will incur in many different issues. Uh, personally, because my portfolio span more than six, seven years back in time, I have a lot of stock that I traded in the past that doesn't exist anymore because maybe the company closed, got acquired, it split up. Uh, these are always a bit confusing. When you insert all the transactions you have, you will find a different mistake in your portfolio. You will see that the portfolio you uploaded doesn't reflect 100% the portfolio you have in your stock broker because of all of this uh, uh, extraordinary action like stock split, uh, spin-off and so on. And you need to, to manage manually. So you need to enter in the single transaction and do the changes you need in order to make it the same as your current portfolio. Unfortunately, this is a problem that all portfolio tracker has. And uh, even if you are able to connect your stock broker, you can still face this problem. My suggestion is always that if you are uh, into investing or dividend investing especially, uh, if you can start to upload your portfolio in Porcedo or in any other portfolio tracker, you can check the video right here, I analyzed many of them, um, start as soon as you can because after the past few years it will be a nightmare to fully upload everything even if there is the stock broker connection. So I close this big disclaimer, the transaction import from Porcedo work uh, quite well. As I said, uh, anyway, you need uh, to play a little bit with that. Let's go back to the home and uh, let's start to analyze all the uh, tabs and uh, functionality of Porcedo, starting in order from the performance. Let's click on the performance tab. Again, this is the data of my portfolio. And here you can see the performance of your portfolio, which is this one, the first line comparing to some benchmark, in this case, S&P 500, Nasdaq, and so on. We see, for example, that my portfolio was never the best performing of uh, this benchmark. You see, it gave an annualized return of a little bit more than 7%, while 
S&P 500 and Nasdaq give it more, more than nine, but it performed better of the knees, for example. And you can see this information divided by year, uh, months, uh, and so on. Here, you see my portfolio is not performing bad, but it's still lower compared to a simple S&P 500. If we move down, we see, for example, all the historical return divided by months. In green, when you have a good performance, in red, when you have a bad one, and the percentage scale on the left. If we go down, we see basically the same representation, it's very similar comparing to your benchmark, in this case, the S&P 500. So for the month of August, for example, time I'm recording, we are at 12 of August, my portfolio had a return of minus 41%, while the S&P 500 have a worst return of 2.58%. So I outperformed of a tiny bit of 0.70% the S&P 500. And you can see this for all the months before. You can do it by months, by quarterly, by annually. And you see that uh, most of the time uh, I underperform comparing to the S&P 500. We do by quarter, uh, the situation is similar. Annually, I almost always have a worse performance comparing to the S&P 500, apart from uh, last year, that because it was a quite of a bear market for all the index. And my portfolio is a dividend portfolio, so it's very stable from some point of view. Speaking of which, let's move to the allocation. The allocation tab is a sort of snapshot of your portfolio at this stage. We can see the market value of all my position. I have 49 holding in this portfolio, so it's quite uh, well distributed. I like to keep my portfolio well distributed. I don't like to have uh, a holding that is much bigger than other. Um, we can see by market value, by cost value, by gain. In this case, I have a huge gain on Broadcom we saw before, or by loss. In this case, 3M, Paramount and Intel are the biggest part. We can also see how the portfolio is divided. Let's go back to market value. They're, they're grouping the holding according to the sector, the industry, the country, which is vast majority of the United States, the region, North America, and the market in this case, uh, call it developed market and not having investment in Asian market or let's say emerging market. And the asset type, of course, is mostly equity and cash. This is a way for us to have a vision of our portfolio. Uh, why is important? Because sometimes you don't realize, but maybe you are over investing on a certain uh, sector and this is uh, bad unless you don't do on purpose you need, to, you need to try to be in some way diversified and if we go down we can see the same portfolio this is the same that was in the dashboard in home this for me one of the most important statistics you can see of your portfolio and uh, i like dividend track that show this statistic it's quite common but not all of them are doing so good Let's move on now to the trade analysis, which is a functionality I'm not using much because uh, this uh, is a way to let, let me zoom out. You can see all my trades right here are exactly not reported all. I mean, most of them are uh, one over another because I had many transactions at the same time sometimes. But we can see all the transactions on my portfolio and we can check for each transaction what is the return. Uh, this is something I don't use. I don't use because uh, I see the portfolio globally at the actual value. I will not enter and see the performance of each different transaction. So it means, for example, uh, when uh, on, uh, you see, uh, 29 of August 2022, I booked 100 share of Intel. This is my return on this exact transaction. But if I go on uh, the 3 of August of the same year that I booked 50 shares of Intel, you see I have a different uh, performance. It gives me something, honestly not. It doesn't give me anything. I like to see my portfolio uh, globally, or at least stock by stock, but uh, transaction by transaction, uh, I, I don't see value in that. Anyway, it is nice as per se to show us this. It's better to have this information and maybe not use it then not have it at all. Let's go to the main tab, in my opinion, which is the dividend track. I am mostly a dividend investor, so my goal to track my portfolio is yes to have 
a performance to understand what is the performance of my portfolio comparing to the market, uh, but is also to keep track of my dividend. I want to know when I receive the dividend, how much I'm receiving, which stock increase or decrease the dividend. I mean, this is very important because sometimes you cannot check your stock broker so easily. I mean, all the time I need to enter, for example, in interactive broker. I need to, you know, it's a, quite a procedure. If you use more than one broker and you want to combine all the information in one, only source you need a portfolio tracker like this one so this is the calendar where we can see this we are on august we can see all the dividend i get in august for example first of august i got from general Mills and verizon this is the two uh, dividend i got on 4th of august uh, from national healthcare industry from on 8th of august crackle barrel and so on this is the dividend i received up to now and this is the history chart. This is something it's very nice for the investors to see uh, because you see how much you get basically every month and you can go back on an old basis and see how it evolved. Of course, you get more dividend because maybe you invest more, so you buy always more share. But uh, the goal of to be a dividend investor is to get higher and higher dividend because the company you are owning are increasing the dividend. So it's nice to see you want always to see your annual dividend going up and your monthly dividend, of course, going up. And right here we have a sort of matrix table on the left side. I mean, on the row, you have all your stocks on the column. You have the months of the year and you can see which one pay dividend when in general are every quarter, as you can see. But if we go to, for example, uh, Realty Income, you see right here it pay every month. I consider the most important tab because uh, it's the one I continuously check uh, every month to see what will be my monthly return. It's important to notice that this dividend we see right here are tax free. So uh, whatever they write, this $60, $64 and so are without any dividend tax. I'm an investor from abroad, I'm not a US person, so I'm subject to the dividend with all the tax. And if I enter in my portfolio setting right here, let's edit the setting, I can decide what is my dividend tax. In this case, I leave zero. I didn't put the with all the tax that in my case is 30%, but here you should do it. You should insert the with all the tax you pay according to the country where you live in order to get the information that are more accurate. Because one thing is to see that you get $60 from Lockheed Martin on September, uh, but after you will see your account much less. So it's important to have a correct uh, information between this and your bank account. Anyway, I tried many different portfolio tracker. I need to say that uh, the information reported of Porcedo are nothing crazy. I mean, it's nothing so different from other portfolio tracker, but uh, it's very easy to use. I like the interface. Uh, uh, it's nice to use uh, on desktop after we'll talk also about the phone app that was released uh, quite recently, I think less than a month ago. I think Porcedo is quite a solid choice. Let's explore also another functionality of Porcedo that not all uh, dividend tracker on general portfolio tracker has, which is the goal tracker. This is a little bit tricky. I'll try to explain how it works. So bear with me, I will do some simulation. So right now I set up a plan let's do it from zero. Uh, you can decide the starting date in this case, uh, let's do it today uh, and the time horizon. For example, I want to see where more my portfolio, I want to set a goal of where my portfolio will go from today to the next 10 years. The starting value is the value of today. So it's the value of my portfolio. And I need to do the expect annual return. We saw before that my portfolio returned in the previous five year an average of seven point something percent. So let's expect, I don't know, a 7.5 percent return of my portfolio. And I can decide to keep contributing to my portfolio, which uh, let's say $2,000 monthly. And let's also decide if I want to grow my contribution or not every year. So for example, every year or every month, I can decide the frequency I want. I can increase by 5% my, uh, my contribution. But let's for the moment say no, I will stick with $2,000 a month from the next 10 years. 
and let's calculate what will be the return of my portfolio. So this is the value of my portfolio up to today. You can see right here. And after, of course, is a forecast. This is what I plan to deposit. You see my deposit uh, increase of $2,000 a month and the full return is going up because it uh, expected the appreciation we, we decided. So we see that at the end of the 10 years, I supposed to have contributed uh, more than $744,000 and I will have around $1.4 million if everything goes with, uh, with, this, uh, with this plan, of course. Let's save it. And you see, you have it right here. These are nice tools because sometimes uh, one of the main problems of investors, especially if you invest long term, is that it's difficult to be committed with your deposit and with your investment. And that this kind of tool will help you to be focused. Now you don't see because you see there is this point and after exactly from this point, it starts the forecast. But when the time will pass by, you see that the black line will start to go on top of this, gray, of this green one. And you will see that if you are really following your goal tracker or not. And that, then you can take a decision. You can understand if maybe you, you need to deposit more, maybe you need to uh, change the return a bit. Let's see, for example, if uh, I go back to the day one of my portfolio. So this is when I did the first transaction, the first that I loaded in Porsedo, and this was the value of my portfolio at the time. And let's skip the 10 year, let's in this case put the 15 year mark in order to have more space. Same expected return. And let's decide for a contribution that uh, is much higher because you see I you see how big it is because I deposit much more than $2,000 a month. Let's maybe move to $5,000 a month. Let's calculate it. Yeah, it's quite uh, accurate at the moment. So let's save it the plan. And you see that the black line is already going on top of the of the green one. At the moment, the performance is better than expected, so I can feel myself happy. Of course, uh, if the situation will be the opposite, the performance is much worse, I need to take some correction. If we go a bit down, we even see uh, in the moment where my portfolio starts to become better performing comparing to the gold tracker. You see at the beginning, uh, my contribution was probably lower or the return of my portfolio was lower, so it's marked with this yellow. But after it turned green and you see I am above the green line, so my performance are better than the one I tracked with a call. Of course, this uh, that I did right now is completely useless. The one you need to do is the one starting today. This is why the soonest you start using Porsedo or any portfolio tracker, the better. Because to find yourself in a situation where you need to insert all the transaction and you need to try to uh, recreate the history of your portfolio is a little bit difficult. If you start day one, my suggestion if you are new to investment is start to use Porsedo or start to use any portfolio tracker, uh, but uh, start to populate it. Also because at the end, even if you want to switch to another portfolio tracker, it would be much easier to export all the transaction from Porsedo and move somewhere else instead of use your broker. Okay, I think I analyzed the, all the basic functionality of Porsedo right now let's move a bit to the settings because there are also some nice information we can do right here you can manage your subscription you can you can change to dark mode which i don't like much but so i prefer in the white one and the calculation method also inside the portfolio if we go and we edit the portfolio as i showed before there is the taxation rate which is very important and the secondary benchmark that you decided to, to insert, there are really everything. There are also cryptocurrency. I don't know why somebody should uh, in some way compare the return of your portfolio with the cryptocurrency, but I don't know. People are different. Before to do a small review of the phone app, I want to talk about the price of Porsedo. We can see right here there are different plan, let's say three different plan. I like to see monthly and not annual. There is a free plan that my suggestion is to use it. Start with the free plan, uh, see how it goes, but uh, uh, Porsedo will track only 50 total transactions. No more. It means that if you have a very small portfolio with very few transactions, 
maybe you can just follow up everything with uh, with the free option but uh, if you want to, uh, to insert all your history of transaction like i did i don't need even the plus option I need the pro option which is 15 dollar a month it's quite of amount if we see by annual become 12 a month but uh, uh, it has a logic uh, if you're able to generate a certain level of return or with portfolio or with dividend uh, because spending almost $200 a year uh, it's quite a, of a price and cannot be suitable for everybody anyway if you are interested to try Porcedo you can check the referral code in the description I think you get something for free but my first suggestion is to try the free version to see if you like it uh, and only after uh, maybe decide to go to a pro plan because uh, there are many of these portfolio tracker out there uh, and all of them are different uh, some of them have good side bad side this is quite normal you need to find the one that works the best for you as i said during the review a little bit more than one month ago it came out of the phone app or side about available for Apple iPhone or Android. I will put on the screen right here and let's take a look together. This on the main screen is exactly the same dashboard we see on the desktop where we can see the value of my portfolio, the return, see it's exactly the same portfolio and we can see the performance uh, uh, by day, by week, by month and so on. It's a sort of simplified copy comparing to the desktop version and uh, I need to say it's lack of the information I need. I hope that they are going to improve in the future but for the moment yes you can see your portfolio you can go check the performance of your portfolio comparing to the s p 500 in this case you can go check the allocation which is exactly again the same we saw on the desktop and we can see all our position even if i need to say it would be much better to have some sort of table when you can see it in a compact way because like this is a little bit confusing especially if you have many positions like, like I have, I have 49 positions and you see how much I need to scroll. And uh, But the biggest problem I see in the dividend tab. The dividend tab, in my opinion, for what I would like a phone app is to be updated on the dividend that I receive. Here I don't have any calendar of the dividend, I mean the simple ex I mean, there's actually the calendar where I see each date, which dividend I get. I have just a statistic of the dividend I'm going to get monthly or annually, as I can show right here. And if we go by months, for example, we click on August, we see all the dividend I received and the one that are confirmed. It would be nice uh, to be shaped a little bit different. Uh, I want a snapshot of the dividend I'm going to get every month with a simple calendar and will be very nice to get a phone notification every time a dividend hit my bank account. Uh, this is something I really like. I like to see a notification on the phone that he, you received the $100 from uh, Apple or something like that. It's very rewarding. At this stage, I think the app uh, is a little bit useless. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see the performance. You can see every day how your performance is going this information are showed but you can have the same inside your stock broker or for example if you're seeking out for your finance uh, these are better way to analyze how your portfolio is going day by day at least for me the phone app should be more focused on the dividend i'm a dividend investor so this is my point of view but for sure if you invest for other reason and with other system maybe you will find this app useful there is also the possibility to input transaction but i would strongly suggest not to do from the app first of all because it's a little bit more confusing and uh, when you do this kind of operation to not mess up everything better to sit and do from the desktop Ooh, it was a long video i hope that i showed all the functionality correct i hope you understand how the platform work uh, if you want more detail also on other platform you can check the video in the description where i analyze uh, many of them but personally i think Porcedo work pretty good is reliable it's a little bit pricey comparing to some alternative the only problem i see with Porcedo, honestly is the lack of of integration automatic integration with the stock broker because this will remove the hassle to load all the transaction every month especially if you are a person who do a lot of different trades and maybe you have more than one stock broker this can be a little bit frustrating every month to go there and insert all the transaction but apart from that the platform works very good i'm very happy that i get the chance to use it and to make this review any question you have please drop a comment under this video because i always reply subscribe to the channel if you didn't do it because it helped a lot and see you in the next video